Hi guys, in this first video, my goal is to make some AI that can make its way through a maze. To make it a bit more interesting, instead of a normal maze that's part of a grid, my AI are flying dots that will have to try and fly through a whole maze without hitting any walls. I'm hoping that once I give them a goal, they'll learn to navigate through the maze to find it. To make this possible, I'm using something called a genetic algorithm, which is a method of teaching my AI that's inspired by a biological evolution. The genetic algorithm will first make a population of dots that fly in random directions. But once they've all stopped flying, we can look at the fitness of each dot. Fitness is just how well a specific dot has performed. The higher the fitness, the better the dot performs. Dots with a higher fitness survive into the next generation, but those that don't perform as well are killed. This is called selection, just like natural selection or survival of the fittest in biological evolution. To encourage the fitness of the dots to improve over time, we mutate them a bit in each generation. Mutating overwrites one of the directions to a random direction in the hopes that it will increase the fitness of the dot. With selection and mutation, we aim to see an improvement in average fitness each generation. This whole process is a brief look at the genetic algorithm. I wanted to start off by just testing that the dots actually learn to fly towards a goal. That means I need to decide what the fitness should be. The closer the dots are to the goal, the better, so the fitness for this task should just be how close they are to the goal. The dots start off going in a random direction, but the ones landing nearer the goal are scoring better, so they're passed on to the next generation. Next generation, we can already see the dots starting to follow a path towards the goal. If I leave it running for a few more generations, it's really easy to see that they've learnt to move towards the goal. By generation 4, they've already pretty much perfected it. Without changing anything, I ran the program again but with a big obstacle in the middle. The dots will need to learn to move round that obstacle before they can get to the goal, instead of just going up like before. Most of the dots just hit the obstacle, but as a couple creep around and get closer to the goal, the rest quickly catch on and follow suit. By generation 2, you can start to see the dots cluster together and go around the obstacle. Again, by around generation 4, they're pretty good at avoiding the obstacles and hitting the goal. I wanted to step it up a bit with the next one by making the obstacle longer and moving the dots and the goal into harder places. They'd have to go all the way around the block and back to get to the goal. By generation 3, it looks like all hope is lost. But in generation 4, one dot manages to find a way around it and get close to the goal. It takes until generation 8 for the dots to start to catch on, but by generation 10 they're pretty much perfect. Ok, well if that works, why not take it even further? Right, yeah that's not going to work. It's got to generation 45 and they still haven't learned. The problem is that once they find a point that is close to the goal, they'll never take a risk and go further away from the goal to get even closer eventually. This is called being stuck at a local maximum. This means that there's somewhere else that they can get a better fitness, but they're too focused on keeping the good enough fitness they already have. To combat this, I think I need to make dots wander around a bit more and try and find other paths. After a lot of trial and error, I found a method that works. The main problem with the last method was that the dots weren't being punished at all if they hit the wall. I changed my measure of fitness so that if they hit the wall, they'd have a fitness of zero. This means they won't continue to the next generation. On top of this, when the dots start, they won't have much time to move, but as generations increase, they'll be able to move more and more. I'm hoping this will gradually teach the dots to avoid the walls to start off with, making them explore a bit more. You can see the number of steps that each dot is allowed to make in the corner over there. Each generation, the step number increases let them go further. This new method also tackles mutation in a slightly different way. Instead of mutating the dots when the next generation is made, dots move in random directions as the step number increases. This is why you can see the dots explode at the end of each generation. By generation 9, you can clearly tell they've found the goal, and it only takes about 4 more generations until they all cluster together. At generation 14, they're pretty much perfect again. 
The only thing now left to test was a full-on maze. I found an 8x8 maze on Google Images and then remade it in my program. As you can see, the dots spread themselves out and traverse a lot of the possible paths in the maze rather than just getting stuck. Once they get round the first few corners, they find a point where the fitness is much higher and they're loads close to the goal. By generation 14, the first dots have already reached the goal. It takes until about generation 20 for most of the dots to be able to reach the goal, which is pretty good to be honest. I change the fitness measure here again by giving dots that reach the goal quicker a slightly higher fitness. I hope this would persuade them to reach the goal a bit quicker. You can see in the step count graph in the top right that they manage to get faster over time, reducing the number of steps they take by almost 30 in about generation 370. I think I can safely say that my AI has successfully learned to solve this maze. Just before the end of the video, I want to thank CodeBullet for creating the basic code that I built upon for this program. He's got a great channel on artificial intelligence that goes into a lot more detail on how the earlier versions of this program work. I've put a link in the description for his channel. Thanks all for watching and let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the future. See ya!